The main problem we were trying to fix was that refugees who are recently arrived have multiple medical issues and they require treatment from both GPs and specialists and that can take months and sometimes even years. And to get best patient outcomes, you need to have a coordinated system. And we didn't have that. So the aims of the Refugee Clinical Hub project were to, number one, improve medical record systems at, at the hospital uh, level, and at the GP level to improve the ability to make a comprehensive healthcare plan. Um, we also wanted to link this information through the clinical hub so that all members of the healthcare team were able to access the information for better patient care. As well as that, we hope to incorporate telehealth so that we could uh, support specialists in rural and remote areas. The system's been developed with input from all of the specialists working in this area across Victoria, so we've had to develop something that's met different people's needs. What that will let us do is provide real-time responsive policy and guideline development in refugee health in Victoria. It means we can evaluate what we're doing, we can see what our patients think of what we're doing and it will let us change our practice to meet the needs of this patient group. The most beneficial aspect has been knowing that there's close integration between primary care and hospital care. So there's reduced duplication. Um, we know that the GPs know what's happened comprehensively and in, in, in a timely manner. And I think also importantly, um, point should be made that this is going to be a tremendous way to build refugee primary care capacity. Anything we can do to make it easier for GPs to be involved in refugee health we're all about and I think if this uh, refugee hub can provide timely, comprehensive, integrated healthcare information for the GPs that will, that will encourage more to be involved. So we use telehealth for a couple of different things. We use telehealth to improve access for patients in regional Victoria. So rather than needing to come here, the patient can attend with their GP in rural Victoria and be joined by video conference to ask the specialist. The second way that we're also using telehealth is to access interpreters. So a lot of the refugee and immigrant patients that we deal with require an interpreter and we've surveyed patients on how they've found that experience and almost universally they've said that they prefer accessing an interpreter by video compared to accessing an interpreter via the telephone. How long have you had this cough for? Oh. Okay, and do you get any troubles with your breathing? So when she overexercises, yeah, she is she's a bit short breath. In a, in a nutshell, patients love it. It is much more convenient for them. So looking first at the idea of patients sitting in the country, we've found that on average it saves patients something like between five and 600 kilometres return trip for, for where we're seeing the patient. Accessing interpreters is good for us as well. The better communication we have with our patients helps us to ensure that they get the right messages, take their medications correctly. The other benefit is that we're able to see patients more frequently because previously what sometimes happens is the patient in the country who otherwise we probably should be seeing every two or three months actually only comes every six months because they say, well look, I can't come down to Melbourne uh, that frequently. CDMNet is a software program in which we can share um, uh, medical information in the team camp team care arrangement setting with um, other team members. It has made it very easier for everybody to look into the patient's record and uh, to have a look into what's the patient's current medication, what was the last measurements, for example, the last blood pressure reading, and uh, we all be on the same page. It is very important that this program continues because, as I said, it's a shared uh, electronic health uh, record system. It is very, very useful. Now we have an integrated refugee healthcare system that works at the GP level, the specialist level, can incorporate allied health professionals and also has a telehealth capacity. You know, one of the things that really excites me about the Refugee Hub is that this is a little bit of a glimpse into the future of healthcare that we want to see. 
not just the future of healthcare for refugees and asylum seekers, but we can see this level of integration being necessary right across the board in healthcare. And I think there's going to be some exciting opportunities open up as a result of our experience with the Refugee Hub, with this group, that can be extrapolated much more broadly.